Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. What's up everybody, Baird here back again with Spec of Tech. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm gonna be doing an unboxing of the Samsung A71 smartphone. But before we get into that, if you are new here, please do subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when my next video drops. And if you do like the content, please do hit the like button, it helps out my channel. A uh, little public service announcement here before I get into the unboxing. In about two or three weeks time, I'm gonna be away from good internet or good Wi-Fi. Uh, so I'm gonna try and upload the videos beforehand. Uh, but as you guys know, I'm a family man, I have three kids, I work out of town a lot, so I am pretty busy. So there's no guarantee I'm gonna be able to get those videos uh, uploaded before I'm away from good Wi-Fi. So if there is a, a period where you don't see a video for a week or two, you know why. All right, so um, up until recently, I was using the LG G8 phone. The reason I was using that phone is because it does have a quad DAC built in. So the audio from that phone is pretty great. Uh, so for those of you that are into music and, and hi-fi, then I would suggest at least checking out the phone. Um, if you do want something a little bit better quality as far as your audio goes coming from the phone, and of course it does have a headphone jack, so that's a huge bonus compared to a lot of the flagship phones these days. Um, but I dropped that phone on the pavement and smashed the screen, and to replace the screen was going to be pretty pricey, so I figured it's probably better just to buy a new phone. Um, but I couldn't find an LG G8 for a decent price for some reason, so I thought I would try a mid-range phone, the Samsung A71. It has some pretty decent specs for the price. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a quad DAC. I'm gonna have to deal without that, but it does retain the headphone jack, unlike the Samsung S20 flagship, so I was pretty happy about that. But I will uh, be changing the camera angle here so that you guys can get a better view of the unboxing, so let's get into the unboxing. All right, guys, we are back with uh, my Amazon box here. I did order the uh, phone from Amazon. Uh, so let's see what's inside. So I did uh, also order a screen protector and a case for the phone right away. Um, for those of you that may be wondering, I did have a case on my LG G8 and it decided to break anyway. So it landed right on the glass and it broke. So not much I could do about that. But here is the uh, glass screen protectors I bought for the Samsung. Put that aside here. And then I bought uh, a case as well for the Samsung. Okay, so here, let's just get this box out of the way, is the box for the Samsung A71. And of course they have some tape on the back here, so I just gotta cut that, and then we'll see what's inside. All right, so let's just open that up. Uh, of course, you got your manuals and whatnot on the top here. I guess I can show you guys with your SIM ejector tool. Oh, and you actually get a case. You get uh, this clear case with the phone. That's kind of a nice bonus. That's not typical for Samsung. I guess uh, I'm used to buying Samsung flagships, so it's not typical for a Samsung flagship, but maybe it's typical for their mid-ranger phones, which I'm actually kind of happy about. I'm glad that it comes with something a little extra. So here is the phone for now. I uh, will take the plastic out in a second after we see what else is in here. So you do get uh, USB-C cable with uh, USB-C charger and it's actually USB-C to USB-C. I'm not sure if you can see that on there. Uh, and then you do get a set of headphones here. I don't think they're gonna be anything too special but uh, I'm glad to see that they include it in their mid-ranger phones as well. All right, so let's set that aside and let's peel some plastic off. So this phone is fairly big. I noticed that right away. It's a fairly large screen. It's a 6.7 inch screen, I believe. And the back is supposed to be um, prism black, I believe is what they call it. So I'm not sure if you can see, but it kind of changes color a little bit in the light. But let's uh, see if it's got any juice and turn it on. And while that turns on, why don't we discuss some of the specs of this phone? Um, so the price of this phone is actually about 539 
uh, to about 599 Canadian dollars on Amazon and about 399 US dollars and again that was on Amazon so I'm sure you can find it in a little bit varying price range there but uh, that's typically what I could find it for when I was looking online uh, so you may be asking yourself kind of what the sacrifices um, would be with Samsung creating this mid-range phone versus their flagship phones uh, and what specs they kind of managed to keep um, this phone is is pretty well specced actually for a mid-range phone um, but one of the sacrifices that the phone made uh, is that the back is made of glastic uh, not to be confused with plastic uh, actually it's basically the same thing they just make it look glossier it has a nicer uh, finish to it so it does look a lot like glass so it has a premium look uh, of course the flagship phones like the s20 uh, do use tempered glass and it is gorilla glass uh, another sacrifice they made is that there is no IP rating on this phone so uh, it's not going to be protected against water or dust so it is going to be prone to that uh, whereas of course the flagship phones do have uh, IP68 rating uh, the flagship processor is also a Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, 8 series which I believe they're at the 865 whereas this phone here it is a Snapdragon 730 processor so it is a step down uh, as far as processing goes but from what I saw online it is still pretty snappy for what it is and uh, another sacrifice that they make is that there's no wireless charging with this phone whereas their flagship of course they do have uh, wireless charging and the uh, another noticeable sacrifice would be the camera module so of course uh, at one third the cost of the flagship phone you're not going to get the uh, same top-notch camera modules but it's not to say that this has a bad camera at all again from what i was seeing online it does have uh, a pretty great camera for being a mid-range phone uh, so that being said, it does have a four camera, camera module as you can see on the back right here. With the main shooter, you do get a 48 megapixel f1.8 aperture uh, lens. And then for the wide angle lens, you get a 12 megapixel wide angle and a five megapixel macro lens, which is something a little bit different. Um, most phones go with a telephoto, whereas this kind of went the opposite direction. Uh, they went with a macro lens for close up shots. The last camera on the back is a 5 megapixel depth sensor lens. And then finally on the front, you do have a 32 megapixel front facing camera. All right, so some of the other specs of the phone, as I stated earlier, it is a 6.7 inch screen. It's super AMOLED with a 2180 by 1080 resolution, uh, which is, I believe, a 393 PPI. Uh, it has a 4500 milliamp hour battery, which is actually larger than the flagship S20 phone this year. So it should have a better battery life than the uh, flagship. The uh, GPU is an Adreno 618 and it does have six or eight gigabytes of RAM depending on the version that you get. My version is the six gigabyte version. Um, and a big plus in my books is the A71 has a headphone jack, which I stated earlier. And the S20 flagship actually does not have a headphone jack. So as you can see here, you got your headphone jack on the bottom, your USB-C charging, and then your bottom firing speaker. This does not have stereo speakers e either. So uh, again, unlike the flagship, that is one of the sacrifices that they made. And then on the side here, you can see that you have the power button, the volume rocker, and then on the top, all you have is a microphone. And then on the other side, there is no Bixby button, which I kind of like. I wasn't a fan of Bixby, but you do have your SIM card and uh, expandable storage slot. All in all, uh, the phone does appear to be pretty good quality. I like, it's a pretty firm, like it's, even though it's made of plastic, it doesn't feel like it, it actually feels like glass. I don't think I, I don't feel like I made any sacrifices buying this phone versus uh, buying the flagship phone. Yeah, that pretty much covers my first impression. I like that the screen, there's, there's next to no bezels on the screen, it looks, like a flagship phone in all honesty as far as the screen goes feel wise it feels like a flagship phone um of course that's just my first impression so uh yeah i think that pretty much covers the unboxing guys it's a, it's a very nice looking phone once i had some more time with it uh, let me know if you would like for me to do a video on uh, a full review of this phone but what are you guys using i've been an android guy 
pretty much since the iPhone 3GS and have been using Android ever since. Why don't you let me know down in the comments if you're an Android fan or an iPhone fan, or if any of you have this Samsung A71, why not drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of this phone. But thanks for watching everybody and make sure to subscribe and tick the little bell icon uh, so you can be notified when my next video drops. And as always, stay techy.